السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله وصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وبعد Always we begin with the praise of Allah Azza wa Jal. We pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants us khayr and barakah in all of our endeavors. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes you and I from those who are seeking goodness in this life. For our families, for our communities, for those who are a part and parcel of us. And those who are extended um, to us. We pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows the month of Ramadan as it began for us that it ends with peace and harmony for us, inshallah. I'm just going to switch this microphone quickly. I think there's a little bit of an echo on this one. Allahumma salli ala nabiyyina Muhammad. Allahumma yassir wa la tu'assir. Hopefully, uh, this is a little bit better, inshallah. So, alhamdulillah, as the month of Ramadan comes to a close, Muslims by nature get a little bit more anxious. We begin to think about what it is that we have achieved and what it is that we could achieve and what it is that we might have missed out on in our relationship with Allah, with our families, with our community, and with those who are external to us. And subhanAllah, we want to end Ramadan strong. We want to end Ramadan with the same vigor as we began it. I remember when we had our first night of Taraweeh here, uh, MashaAllah, the hall was completely packed. By about the fifth day, MashaAllah, which is a natural human trend, with the busyness of our schedules, with the tiredness, with the kids' school, with all of the different things, the jama'ah begins to shrink. But the Prophet wasallam, his example was that this human condition of laxity that happens with familiarity of some of the routines you do, you take it for granted, he would then accelerate his pace in the final 10 nights. And subhanAllah, for many of us, sometimes we hold our sadaqah or zakah and we say, I'm going to give these in Laylat al-Qadr. I'm going to wait till the 27th or the 25th or the 23rd or the 29th night. I want it to be something that's extra special. Sometimes we commit ourselves to tahajjud prayers at Masjid al-Rahman or Masjid Ibrahim. Some may go to i'tikaf, mashallah. And we try to establish some of the traditions of the Prophet ﷺ that show as the scarcity of time arrives, that there is an increase in pace. And therefore, I have two questions for you, inshallah, as we get closer to the time for Adhan al-Maghrib. Does your day in Ramadan feel and look similar to your days outside Ramadan? And this is an important question to ask ourselves. What has changed with the month of Ramadan in our character, in our habits? I'm not speaking about routines, things like uh, when we eat or where we go to work or things of that nature. I'm speaking about how we view our relationship with Allah, how we try to become builders of peace even within our home, how we try to find avenues of expressing our frustration in a lighter capacity than we would in the month of uh, before Ramadan or after Ramadan. How do we seek to connect those who we disconnected from, whether it was for uh, financial reasons or family problems or whatever it was that kind of made us lose touch with even some who are cousins or family? Has a divorce that we've endured caused us to become more bitter and more hostile, to become more selective in our love with our children and even our former spouse? Is it something that is important for us to comprehend that the month of Ramadan is meant to be a month of change? And as the cycles of life change, as we went from summer into autumn, I know it didn't feel like autumn today or yesterday. It's still, mashallah, autumn, as it's still, alhamdulillah, quite warm. But as the cycle changes, you notice that 
the day goes longer or shorter, the, uh, the, the landmarks around you begin to take on different colors and shapes, that there's a different mood in the people. All of this is also a part and product of the temperament of a believer. And I want this to be something that you kind of go away with it. As the month of Ramadan comes to an end, and as I have begun to settle into a pattern of going to the masjid every night, coming to Al Amin College for my evening prayers, I've, sec I've been watching Umar Sulaiman's Yaqeen series. I don't know if that's uh, something that you're watching. You've set for yourself a pace and a tempo. Does that end the moment we say Eid Mubarak? Or are there things that you want to keep outside Ramadan that you found now are valuable? For many of us, we've proven that I can get up from my home, I can bring my sons, I can bring my family to the Masjid for Salatul Isha consistently for 30 days in a row. And I can be a person who's patient trying to find a parking spot. And I'm willing to endure that because Salah is important to me. And I've made that change in myself. Is that something that will stay with me? Is that something that I'm going to hold on to? I've committed myself to struggle each and every day to continue with the khatm of the Qur'an. And even if I don't finish the whole Qur'an, I've committed to try to read as much as I can every day, hoping to achieve it. Eid Mubarak, does that bring it to an end? Or is the Qur'an still a partner in our life? The sound of the Qur'an for our children to hear, bringing them to the masjid, even if they run around outside a little bit, having that family connection where you call up your friend, do you want me to pick you up or are you going to pick me up today? Carpooling in righteousness, carpooling to the house of Allah, thinking about where I'm going to give my charity. Like in the month of Ramadan, everybody gets very picky. Sheikh, where will this charity go? Is this Zakat al fitr going to the people of uh, Burma? Where, where is it going? I want to know. You become really invested in wanting to do good for others. And you ask, subhanAllah, all of the Imams in our own private WhatsApp groups, yes, we have our own. We talk about your questions when we need help with each other. A brother asked, a sister said, what, do you, what are your thoughts? What's your madhab view on this? The questions you're asking are quite technical because you want to be very precise. Can I give my zakah? Can it be in money? Or are they going to give it in food over there, brother Yahya? Zakat al-fitr. You want to know more. And this energy of being invested in your amal, in your good deeds, is a sign of iman, is a sign of an awakening heart that brings you to a place of trust and love with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That you want to do your due diligence. You want to be sure that I'm committed to a path that was is, is pleasing to Allah and is a benefit to the community I live in and abroad. So that's the first aspect, the first change that I want you to think about, the fasting that carried us forward and what we are going to take and keep behind with us. And that subtly, implicitly, is what Allah says to us, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ Perhaps you will recognize where your taqwa lies. And that's the second message I have for you. Where my taqwa is does not necessarily need to be where your taqwa is. And what you are conscious of Allah for may be different to what I am conscious of Allah for. There are certain challenges that I have that certain things may be easy for me or easier for me and harder for you. And there are other things that are harder for you, but easier for me. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not judging your siyam with my siyam with excess siyam. Every one of us is fasting in their own lane, in their own race. لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ That the consciousness that I seek between me and Allah is meant to be personal. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he indicated to his heart, 
And he said, At-taqwa ha-huna. Your consciousness, your piety, your fear of God is here. It begins in your heart. It's internal. It's something that is personal to you and Allah. And the Prophet ﷺ, he says to us, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَنْظُرْ إِلَىٰ سُوَرِكُمْ وَلَا إِلَىٰ أَجْسَادِكُمْ Allah does not look to your physicality or to the body type or make. Allah is not concerned if you are tall or short or dark or light or male or female. وَلَكِنْ يَنْظُرُ فِي قُلُوبِكُمْ إِلَىٰ قُلُوبِكُمْ But rather, the Almighty looks into the depth of your heart. وَإِلَىٰ أَعْمَالِكُمْ And whatever actions follow from it. And therefore the month of Ramadan, one of its terms and titles is that it is شَهْرُ الْقُلُوبِ وَتَصْفِيَةُ الْقُلُوبِ It is the month of the healing of the heart and the cleansing of the heart and the preparation of the heart. It is where you and I seek to find a nearness to Allah and a closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So as you exit the month of Ramadan, look within your heart as to where are the things that now you know can be improved on, where the things you have as strength that you can build greater in, and where are the debilitations and the weaknesses that we need to take avertive action immediately. One of the essential and final messages that I leave you with as we get ready for our iftar insha'Allah and the adhan in the next seven minutes or eight minutes insha'Allah is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Almighty, has tied certain acts of worship with fasting. So when you hear that verse that all of us are familiar with, even though we are not knowing of all of Surah Al-Baqarah, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ When my slaves ask you, O Muhammad, about me, tell them I'm near, I'm near them. أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِ إِذَا دَعَانٍ I answer the call of the one who summons me, invokes me, prays to me. فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُ لِي Let them respond to me. وَلْيُؤْمِنُ بِي And show their commitment of faith to me, and I will answer them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts the verse of his response to our prayers in the middle of the verses of fasting and the regulations of fasting. And the reason for that is as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, الدُّعَاءُ هُوَ الْعِبَادَةِ The essential element of any worship is your supplication, invocation, request and petition of Allah, magnifying Allah, extolling praise upon the Almighty, acknowledging the greatness of the Creator and the Maker who we are all accountable for. Every act of worship necessitates in a dua. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow the dua that you keep in your heart, that at times we might even be too shy to ask of Allah. Zakariya alayhi salam, Allah describes his dua, إِذْ نَادَ رَبَّهُ نِدَاءً خَفِيَّةً That when he would make dua for, uh, for Allah Almighty to bless him with a son, after so many years of not having a child, he's asking with a hushed tone. And the mufassireen, they say, it's almost as if he is shy to keep asking Allah, although he knows Allah will respond. وَلَمْ أَكُمْ بِدُعَائِكَ رَبِّي uh, Never have I been let down by you, O oh Allah. You've always answered my dua. But there's this humility at times we keep it. Allah knows what eyes may not have seen and what is kept deep in your heart, in your breast. As you sit before Allah and as you stand in your prayers and as you go about your day, let your whole remaining days of the month of Ramadan be filled with dua, be filled with request and asking, Oh Allah, accept for me. Oh Allah, guide me. Oh Allah, help me. Oh Allah, assist me. Oh Allah, help them. Oh Allah, protect them. Oh Allah, increase me. Oh Allah, don't deprive me. Oh Allah, my family, my daughter, my son, my children, my husband, my wife, my father, the living, the dead. Oh Allah, my future, my past, my present. 
Oh Allah, my debts. There is so much in our life that you don't just simply stand behind myself or Shaykh Mu'taz and just simply say Ameen when we make qunut. Dua is, is, is you and Allah in seclusion that in the midst of all of the world, Allah answers you. And I conclude with this beautiful hadith where Allah speaks to us in a hadith Qudsi. He says, لَوْ أَنَّ أَوَّلَكُمْ وَآخِرَكُمْ if the first of you, O mankind, till the last of you, from the first till the end, stood in one place, all humanity in its entirety, from the beginning of time till the end, if you stood ala in wahid, in one place, in one location, and each of you asked me for what you wanted individually, personally to yourself, and I was to give each and every one of you your request, ما نقص من ملك شيئا It would not deplete my kingdom of might with even an iota. In one narration it says, it would not take from my stores of provision the movement of a needle in an ocean. Allahu Akbar. Your dua is not given to one who is absent or one who is unable or one who is uncaring. And therefore, as you commit yourself to Allah, commit yourself with your hunger and your thirst in feeling the pain of others. As I fast in front of you today, I fast for the people of Gaza. As they hunger, you and I hunger. As they thirst, you and I thirst. As they need, you and I need. As they line up for their food, remember as they line up for their food. Remember the images of those young children with outstretched plastic bags, not even plates or pots, seeking not food for themselves, but something for their brother or their sister or their neighbor. As you fast and you make dua, don't make it just for yourself, but reflect on the blessings we've been afforded in this blessed city and land that we call home. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us at times what we may not have shown that we are deserving of in terms of our character and habits. May Allah increase us all in good. Allahumma ameen. Shaykh Abdullah has arrived. That means the adhan is imminent, I believe. Let me check on my phone, inshaAllah. Now we are a little bit more cautious with the adhan. I know there's a few timetables. I'm a little bit more strict than your app. Because sometimes your app is set to a default setting that uses the Muslim World League, which is set at 16 degrees. And there is a difference in the delineation of the sun for us so far south. It is more accurate to be a little bit further. So we are in the extreme areas of the world. There is a four to five degree variance. You will see in your phone apps, it does allow you to see the default setting that you can make the incremental change. And if you uh, consider uh, the Malaysian standard and the Indonesian standard, I believe that they would be closer to where you and I should lie, inshallah, inshallah. So don't just simply follow the equatorial standard that comes from Riyadh. There is a variance in the four minutes, inshallah. So I know maybe at home you broke your fast at 6, 7, 6 or 7. We're going to break two minutes later. Bi-idhnillahi ta'ala. Allah barak bikum. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants you the khayr and barakah of this dunya and akhirah. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants you a good close to your fast today. Remember that dua before you break your fast. And at the time you break your fast, and after you break your fast, all of it is answerable. The Prophet ﷺ said, at the time before you break, Hina yuftir, when he is breaking and she is breaking, and after they have broken their fast. So this is a time of istijaba. Inni da'in fa'aminu. I make dua for myself and you. Say ameen. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives us our sins and opens to us the doors of barakah and khayr. ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار. Oh Allah, we ask you to give us the good of this life and the good of the next and protect us from the punishment of Jahannam. ربنا لا تؤخذنا بما فعل السفهاء منا. Oh Allah, don't hold us accountable on account of the foolish conduct of others. Oh Allah, we ask you not to burden us with more than we can withstand. 
And Ya Allah, we ask you to send peace and harmony in our homes, in our hearts, with our families and our community. We pray that you light up our life so that we can be illumination to others in the dark. We pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants us his light. Allahumma azim lana nura, ya nura samawati wal ard. We ask you, Ya Arham al Rahimeen, to send your choicest blessings and benedictions and salutations and peace upon our Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In Allah wa malaikatahu yusalloon ala nabi. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu. Sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa zid wa barik ala abdika wa rasulika Muhammad al nabi al ummi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim. Adhan al maghrib insha'Allah. الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله. الله ورسوله. أشهد أن محمد رسول الله. لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله 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 الله أكبر الله الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله اللهم رب اللهم أنت رب العالمين
and thank you for the rest of what you have um, and the fantastic dinner, you know, the dinner and also support the cultural and uh, everyone here and uh, you know, we had very, very, you know, like the, the party uh, government party. Yeah, thank party. you very much for everyone. Thank you. Allah. Uh, if we can align our self, fill the gaps, inshallah, aqm is salat. ترجمة ترجمة للأقل تمام وهذا كتاب لي ينتبع لي برضه إن شاء الله خلاص أحترقكم هنا على المنبر استووا تراسوا واعتدلوا Humble yourself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ikhsha'u fi salatikum. Sisters, come forward. Complete the lines, insha'Allah. Allah hibarak fikum. We speak Tamil at this point of salat. It's okay. No problem, insha'Allah. Humble yourself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. الله يبارك فيكم ارشعوا في صلاتكم وصلوا صلاة مودعة الله أكبر سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والضحى والليل إذا سجى ما ودعك ربك وما قلى ولا الآخرة خير لك من الأولى ولا سوف يعطيك ربك فترضى ألم يجدك يتيما فآوى ووجدك ضالا فهدى ووجدك عائلا فأغنى فأما اليتيم فلا تقهر وأما السائل فلا تنهر وأما بنعمة ربك فحدث الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر بسم الله الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين
بسم الله قل أعوذ برب الناس ملك الناس إله الناس من شر الوسواس الخناس الذي يوسوس في صدور الناس من الجنة والناس الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر سبحان الله الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله الله أكبر بسم الله الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر أعلى وبحمده سبحانه الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر شهد أن لا إله إلا الله شهد أن محمد الله اللهم صل على محمد لا إله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله استغفر الله استغفر الله استغفر الله اللهم السلام السلام عينا على ذكر we can ask for extra care and caution, insha'Allah, as people are doing their sunnah and so on. For those who are departing upstairs, may Allah grant you ease. Be careful as we are heading down the staircase, insha'Allah. Jazakumullah khair. May Allah grant you an accepted uh, siyam for today and for the days to come. Allahumma ameen. Allah minna wa minkum salih al a'mal. Allahumma taqabbal minna inna ka'in. وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم اللهم بارك ما شاء الله تبارك الرحمن as you can see ما شاء الله thousands of people here with us today الحمد لله I know there's a few of you watching from the U.S. ما شاء الله the sisters as well اللهم زد وبارك اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين بسم الله الله قبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم اللهم بارك يا رب العالمين يا من الله